We are here in the city of London, the heart of the financial district for FinTech Week. It's been a really good two days and SVK Crypto have been invited down to speak on a panel about the latest trends in VC investing. Hey Shane, good to see you. Buddy. How are you? Well, you everything yeah, cool. Good. Yeah, Hi, I'm Shane. Andrew, nice, nice to meet you, Andrew. How are you? How you doing? What's been going on? Good. Do you guys know each other? No. Nope. Coin Telegraph. Oh, great. So okay. Shane is one of the biggest, largest keynote speakers here in the UK. Oh, nice. oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. I did not know that. I'm oh, not really? a speaker. No, everyone says uh, you're the man. Oh, really? You know what my brother calls that. you? Oh, don't know. My, don't tell anybody. Oh, really? That. <laughs> my, my brother calls you the Conor McGregor of crypto. Oh, I bet. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So you're at Coin Telegraph. Okay. Um, we are based here in, in London and we're SVK Crypto, we're a venture capital firm. And you guys have very kindly uh, publicized uh, some of our latest investments. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. thanks for that. We're just really focused on what we're doing and it it's, takes all of our time and all of our uh, energy. First of all, thank you so much to FinTech Week for having us here as a panelist and a discussion. Um, I think it's amazing to see so many people in London coming together and it's been an excellent event. The feedback has been phenomenal. So thank you so much for asking me down to speak. My name is Shane Kehoe. I'm one of the co-founders of SVK Crypto. SVK Crypto is a venture capital firm based here in East London. We manage capital on behalf of our clients. We have a $50 million fund. We invest into equity stakes. We're not interested in any ICOs, initial exchange offerings, or any type of tokens. We take equity, we take ownership, but what we bring to the table is an enormous amount of value. We've already made four investments, we're about to make another two, and we're backed by the guys at Block One, which are the creators of the EOS IO token. We're passionate to the core about what we do. We live, eat, and breed. We're laser focused, and we're also very much pushing London as the blockchain capital of the world. So thank you so much for having me on the panel today. Business is tough. It doesn't matter what you wrap it in, whether it's an IPO, whether it's an ICO, whether it's an initial exchange offering, business is really, really tough. It's tough to execute. It's tough to stay in the game. It's tough to have a product and a service and it's timing, let alone even a blockchain component to it. Business is tough. Just look at when you go back and look at the um, early internet days and you look at the technical revolution and the IPOs that, that traded in the late 1990s. When you look at the amount of companies that listed back then that are still a, around today, there's a 90% failure rate. And they went through the IPO process. So they had an investment banking team, they had the due diligence, the lawyers, some were pre-revenue. It was tough back then. It's even tougher now. So for these businesses, and I think, I think what you're getting to say is that it was a speculative investment. And the majority, I think there was 902 ICOs in 2017. By 2018, uh, January 1, 46% of those 2009 uh, 102 ICOs were trading with no liquidity. When you got to the end of 2018, that figure was like 99.99% recurring. Um, great ideas, but that's all they were. Execution is, is a totally different aspect, and it was difficult for them to do it, and so early on as well. So, I'm a firm believer that the next wave of multi-billion dollar IPOs that will list on the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, the Nuremberg, the London Stock Exchange, will be coming out of this space. That I am absolutely sure of. The next billion dollar companies, like that we've seen with the sharing economy, like what we've seen with the social media, with Facebook, Lyft, Uber, the next billion dollar companies will be coming out of this space. And it's our job now to source, analyze, invest, and befriend the next Mark Zuckerbergs, the next entrepreneurs, the next companies, the next devs, the next other venture capital firms, that when that happens, we're going to be right there. 
So when we look at the space, we want to be aligned with the original um, co-founders of these entities. And when we look at the structures of those, of those ownerships, they have equity. Now, in the future, they might have some type of token generation event, or they might have one of these offerings. That's fine. We'd be more than happy to take our slice of, of, of tokens at that point. But at this point, when we look at the corporate structures of all those entities, they're all taking equity. So we believe that in the future, when there'll be M&A activity, when we'll start to see acquisitions of these entities, it might not happen around the token, but it's definitely going to happen around the equity. Also, we're managing a fund, so I don't want to deal with with swings of volatility. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm running a token fund and I'm marked to market and my, my fund is, is, is up and down 30%. I want to sleep at night. So taking equity in a, tra in a traditional VC manner, we're very, very comfortable with. We're long term. Like Our fund is an 8 to 10 year fund. Really, I've got a 20 year view on this space. And I'm not going to make any decision that's going to be short term because the real winnings will be in 10 years' time when we're talking about adoption. The real winnings will be when we see M&A. The real winnings when we have actually businesses with sustainable business models, with revenue generation, has mass adoption. Like, we've seen this all happen before. It was called the internet. I remember going back into the late 1990s and going to an IPO meeting with Goldman Sachs, and the analyst in that particular IPO was valuing that business on eyeballs. The amount of people that looked at the website, he could generate some type of of, of valuation around it. It was obscene, of course it was. But that's where we are right now. So stay in the game, think long term, pick your winners and let them do what they want to do. Your question was, how do you find them? Yeah. yeah. Right, so how do you find them? Well, what do you do? Like, do you sit behind a computer and, and just think that they're gonna find you? Or do you actually go out and add value? Do you actually go out and build communities? Do you add value to individual investors? Do you build a platform so that you can get companies whereby it's not just about them selling you, you have to sell them. It's a relationship with regards to venture capital. It's not what they bring to the table, it's what you bring to them. How can you help them? Can you uh, uh, work on their branding? Can you help? build relationships within the space? Can you network across your other portfolio companies? Can you sit on the board? Can you introduce them to further capital? Can you help them execute their business? It's a two-way relationship within venture capital. So what you're talking about is advising. I'm not talking about advising. I'm talking about getting stuck into an investment that you're passionate about and managing well, and maintaining for that 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. So it's like, it's like when you have that reputation of actually ownership and supporting and digging in, then companies will come and find you, but it's got, it's got to be a fit. Not everything fits perfect. It's a relationship, and you, you have to help them succeed in every way because you are being judged on, on, on their success. But how we find them here at SVK Crypto is we do so many things for the community. We've got an awesome network, and we do that by giving it all away, bringing people together, having meetups, creating content, being, being front forward and facing and jumping on planes and really, really building it. This space is so nascent right now. It's not like we're going into an equity market or a real estate market or a commodity market where there is already the big incumbents based in the space. If you're willing to get out and connect, as I know my fellow panelists are, because I see you all the time out, um, and you're willing to add value and be a connector, it's not where the space is now. It's where it's going to be in 10 years and 20 years' time. And for me, it's all about building those relationships now and not even worried about monetizing them. That will all come in the future. So give out to give get back. Just coming back onto your, your winter, and I think we're somewhat out of the crypto winter, uh, more of a crypto thaw. <laughs> I think that actually within the last year, the best projects, the best protocols, Actually, what I've seen from the tech side, the best amount of, of product being built has actually happened in the last year. It didn't happen as the markets were going parabolic. I mean, when you start to see what's happened across other protocols and other projects, I've started to see a flight to quality, less noise, and actually real tech being built out. And what we've really noticed, and this is obviously based around FinTech, but we've seen amazing projects on the fiat on-ramp and off-ramp. We've seen more custody products uh, offered for institutional investors. Um, so, and you've also seen some, some, some institutional type trading platforms as well that I know that a lot of the big hedge funds have started to use. And they've all been built out in, in, in 
in the last year. So I think actually um, I find that the best projects are built in, in the toughest times. And certainly you'll find projects that are just more leaner when, when the market is a little bit tighter. So uh, I, think it's, I think it's been a wonderful last uh, 12 to 18 months. If I asked each of you, where do you think the first trillion dollar blockchain company, new company, not a Mercedes that decides or whatever, or Facebook that does legal, where, where, what space or what platform is it going to be looked on? What, what do you think is going to create? Um, just, just to be clear, when you're looking at a trillion dollars, are you talking about market capitalization? Um, why does that actually really matter? Like, a, like a trillion dollars, like, who gives? A like when you're looking at the market capitalization, like you're looking at the value of the equity, right? So is that the right way to look at it? Are we not looking at, should it be like a, you know, a billion people that are now unbanked? Should it not be a billion people that are now using a decentralized ledger? Should it not be a billion people that now have property rights or voting? Like maybe that's the wrong way to look at that market cap. It should be looking at how you're gonna make the world a better place by solving people problems which aren't solved by its current centralized systems. That's where you should be looking. That's where I'm. That's where I'm at. Do you know what? If 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 you've if you've solved if you've solved that, you're all going to do really well. Don't don't worry about how am I going to get money. It's like how is this going to get solved? Because that bigger picture will make everyone wealthier. You're saying so. It's something like getting your first billion users is going to create the first. So so which sector is going to get the first? Okay, ma so, okay, so to really answer your question, to give you some value, when you're looking at mass adoption, where do you see that happening first? I think for us at SVK Crypto, we're very passionate about the gaming space. When you look at the history of gamers and you, you understand that how they've been mining gold and they have in-game assets, when you look at the youth of today, that's where you really have to look. And when you see any kid between six and 12 years old, as I'm sure that you all have, have, have children in the audience, look at where their attention is. It's not looking at a bus shelter. It's not looking at the TV. They're on your phone and they're playing a game which has an in-game economy so when you're looking at how we'll see that users go parabolic I, I believe it will be one of the verticals of that will be in the gaming space we've already started to see that initially <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you very much thank you thank you very much okay okay thanks a lot